Hey everyone, Adam and Andrew here with It Takes Two Takes, here to talk about episode four for season two of The Mandalorian. We are taking a brief detour to Dave Navarro. Or, right. <laughs> I mean, we're going to Navarro and we're going back to yet another plant that we've been to. I don't know about you, but as this was happening, I was sitting here thinking, uh, here we go again. We've been here, we've been to Tatooine, we're, we've been to Navarro, we spent a lot of season one in Navarro, yet he needed, I feel like there, he, there was some substance. Yeah, and he needed a ship repaired, right? I mean, he was yeah. he, it, it, his uh, ship was in rough shape after the last episode, last two episodes, really, so mm -hmm. he needed some repairs. He needed some repairs. We got a little Baby Yoda moment leading up to it. There's a little bit of electricity going for both the viewers and literally for Baby Yoda in that moment. Probably another Funko Pop. You can go ahead and call it if you'd like. Uh, I, be I, I was more thinking, you know, later on, him with the cookie is going to be a Funko Pop. Oh, you know? yes, yes. The sea cow cookie, the blue. Right. As much as we think Moff Gideon is the villain in this series so far, can we talk about that kid that would not share with Baby Yoda? Let's talk about how much of an ass that kid is. Uh, I mean, everyone is enthralled by his cuteness, but apparently not that kid. I would buy a Funko Pop of that kid, by the way, as much <laughs> as I can't stand him. I would do it. I'm just, just going to put it out there. We've got a little schoolhouse with a protocol droid teaching these children and ultimately Baby, Baby Yoda, which, by the way, finally used some force powers. I thought that was interesting. He's essentially going. Well, he's he essentially had going he, was motiv cookie, he was motivated. He was motivated. Yeah, he was motivated. Yeah. He wanted that cookie. And that, yeah, we, that kid wasn't going to share. He's not, Baby Yoda's not used to, Baby Yoda's used to just, you know, here I am cute, give right. me a cookie or give me whatever. And for once it didn't work. So he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to take the cookie then. <laughs> Baby Yoda has a knife to his neck and he's like, mm, you're going to help me. Right, Mando? But then he wants a cookie and then he uses force powers. That's what it took all this time. <laughs> I noticed that uh, uh, IG-11, they had erected a statue of him in the background when they were walking into the school, which I thought was hilarious to me. I don't know what else I missed in this episode, but I'm glad I ended up catch catching that the second time around. Yeah, so we see that the person that uh, Mando got in the very first episode of season one at the very beginning uh, yeah. is back uh, working off his debt. They wrangle him along on this mission to an Imperial base that's supposed to be skeleton a skeleton crew. crew. Yeah. Which ends up not being a skeleton crew. Some good, uh, I should say some bad shooting from the stormtroopers and some good shooting from them. Not only bad shooting from the stormtroopers, but I feel like every sort of canned boilerplate line we've ever heard from stormtroopers in any classic Star Wars film <laughs> they throw into this episode. And I have to say, you know, they put these controls out there on these ledges. I mean, it, it reminded me of uh, A New Hope. You know, Obi-Wan has to go out to turn off the uh, tractor beam. And there they have this ledge for these controls. No railings, no safety harnesses, nothing. Just yeah, uh, that's the security is uh, you might fall. And they called it out. It was great. Right. But we find out that, you know, this this is a lab and it's, uh, you know, tied back to Baby Yoda again. Right. Uh, yeah. So we're getting Baby Yoda back in the plot more than just being cuteness. Um, the Empire's desire for Baby Yoda and his blood and what little blood they got from him last time is not mm -hmm. enough. They need him some more. And yeah, it was a good action um, sequence there as they were escaping and everything. As much as the Razor Crest was, was uh, wrecked uh, on touchdown and everything... Uh, they repaired that thing really well, really fast. Yeah, I don't know who the mechanic was on that, but uh, I thought the same thing. Like, good like, job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm going to, you guys go handle this. I'll be right back. And it was basically the equivalent of picking up like a, it's like a pickup grocery order and just coming right back. And all of a sudden it was pristine. I mean, I don't know, uh, how, I don't know how long it took them to actually drive to the other end of the planet or whatever, but I feel like that was still a really quick repair job considering oh. how rough that thing was. That base was going to blow in 10 minutes. And we know basically what happened from that point on. I mean, that chase couldn't have been more like aside from what we saw on screen. And Realistically, that wasn't a 15 or 20 minute chase. That was much less. And his jetpack got him back to the base really, really fast too. Right. 
Yeah, uh, and he managed to grab Yoda from the school really quickly, too. Like, he jetpacked back to the school, grabbed Yoda, got into the Razor Crest, fired it up, no problems from the repair, right. and, and up in the air in time to save everybody. It kind of paid off. The, the dog fight at the end, to me, was very reminiscent of what I love about the space battles and the air, like, well, the actual, what, like, flight what, battles in Star Wars. What gets me, though, and this is where I have a little bit of an issue with this, is in the first season where Mando landed, they had to camp out at one point overnight because it was a pretty decent distance or whatever um, from the Razor Crest to the town. Yet mm-hmm. they're able to go to the other end of the planet and back in like 10 minutes. But in any case, uh, it was a good action sequence. The pacing was good. Um, you know, we're getting the Empire. Apparently Empire's now going to be tracking the their razor crest they left off with moff gideon looking at his sort of his soldiers which some are theorizing they're dark troopers which i don't know a whole lot about the uh the eu but i do know the pc game from the 90s dark forces and i remember dark troopers from that and that was my thought when i saw this lineup these troops of uh, soldiers right by Moff Gideon. And it kind of alluded that he was sort of building this army. I find it interesting. And I also found it interesting that I don't know which way they're going with this, but it seemed like they were maybe trying to connect the sequel trilogy and, you know, the Palpatine having the clones or maybe not, if not only clones, but maybe trying to build Snoke. There was some allusion to that. And I'm not entirely sure I'm okay either way, but I just hope that adds to the, you know, the suspense or the storytelling of the season without it completely forcing itself into the sequel trilogy. We'll see. I'm hoping if we have any more side quests, it's only one more episode of side quest. Um, well, I saw the next episode is directed by Dave Filoni, and I think it was written by him as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if sort of fan favorite Ahsoka is the centerpiece of the next episode, and he would be the person to say, no, 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 I got this. This is my episode. So something to think about. It would be nice. Um, I mean, we still got to get back to Tatooine for Boba Fett and his armor. Um, so I just it'll be interesting to see what, what they do. And we should end this by mentioning also the fact that, you know, we got to see uh, Baby Yoda apparently likes roller coaster rides uh, <laughs> because during the fight, he was all about loving that uh, the ride as uh, during the dog fight uh, a little bit too much because after the cookie, he threw up on yeah. himself. Blue macaroon. As Tobias Funke would say about his acting coach, Carl Weathers, Baby Yoda just blew himself. So, uh, it was a good episode. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, those are my thoughts on it. I don't really have a whole lot else to say on it than what we've already covered. Yeah. Other than the fact that Carl Weathers directed this episode, like I found that interesting cause he hasn't directed it in a, in a, a whole lot, especially anything of this magnitude. And it was very well done, uh, especially the action sequences, the chase sequence. So kudos to my man, Carl Weathers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so looking forward to next week. Uh, we'd obviously love to hear your thoughts and, you know, drop us a comment. Uh, if you not already subscribing to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, you know, ring that bell for notifications, all the usual stuff till next time. This is Adam and Andrew with it takes two takes.